Today I thought we'd talk about Costaleja or Indian paintbrush. About 200 different species of the flower exist, and nine of them are native to Texas. Indian paintbrush grow in prairies, plains, meadows, pastures, savannas, in the edge of woodlands, and along roadsides. Thanks in part to the Texas Department of Transportation, which buys and sows about 30,000 pounds of wildflower seeds each year. If blue bonnets are the star of the spring wildflower show, the Indian paintbrush is their co-star. Well, perhaps it's more of a sidekick. It's a parasitic plant, meaning it relies on other plants to grow. One of the many reasons it's often found embedded in a field of blue bonnets. A little later, I'll tell you the Native American legend of the paintbrush. But first, let's talk about the species in Texas. While Indian paintbrush is by far the flower's most common name, it's also occasionally nicknamed butterfly weed, prairie fire, painted lady, and grandmother's hair. The latter name is attributed to the Chippewa tribe, who used the flower to make a hair wash and treat women's illnesses in addition to rheumatism. The paintbrush was macerated in Greece by the Indians and used as hair oil to invigorate the hair and make it glossy. This effect was probably due to the high selenium content. Some tribes use these plants for medicinal purposes. Others used it as a love charm. Indian paintbrushes were also used to make red dye. The petals of the plant are edible. The greenery is toxic. Keep that in mind. Because Indian paintbrush is an annual, do not mow existing paintbrush plants until they have completed their bloom and dried up entirely. Mowing too soon will greatly reduce the number of plants the following year because they must be reseeded each year. Castaleja is often found thriving among stands of lupines or blue bonnets as lupines are nitrogen fixing and produce a number of toxins that may inhibit herbivory. Castaleja draws these chemicals and nutrients from lupines and does well as a result. As you well know, the blue bonnet is my favorite wildflower. However, the downy paintbrush is coming in at a close second. I just love these babies. When traveling down the roadsides, I'm often looking for a background or something to go with those fabulous wildflowers. This white fence is one that I've been eyeing for a long time. I finally got my chance to videotape it, but I still have not had the chance to pull over and actually shoot the fence. I don't want to park on the wildflowers, and I can't park in a private driveway. How will I ever access the fence? I really don't know. I'll most likely have someone drop me off and then come back and pick me up, as long as it's safe. Sometimes it's just not safe, and you just don't get that shot.
Once upon a time, a Blackfoot maiden fell in love with a wounded prisoner she was attending. The maiden realized that her tribe was only nursing its captive in order to torture him later. She planned an escape of the prisoner, going with him for fear of punishment for such a deed. After some time in her lover's camp, she grew homesick for a glimpse of her home. She finally went to the side of her old camp, hid in the nearby bushes, and overheard two young braves discussing what would happen to the maiden who betrayed them, if only they could find her. Knowing she could never return, but nonetheless longing to return, she took a piece of bark and drew a picture of the camp upon it with her own blood, gashing her leg and painting with a stick. After drawing the picture, the maiden threw the stick away and returned to her lover's camp. Where the stick landed, a little plant grew with a bush-like end, dyed with the blood of this girl, which became known as the first Indian paintbrush. How can you help me to keep bringing you great creative content? There's a link for that in the description below. Enjoy the journey.